Add the finishing touch. Master decals to enhance realism in every corner of your scene. This video is part of our Unreal Engine full course. Subscribe and check the playlist for more tutorials. If we take a look at Quixel Bridge, you'll see that we haven't talked much about decals. Decals are additional details that we can add to our scene. To understand the decals more easily, I can tell you that they are like graffiti. And like graffiti, they are placed as another layer on top of your original material. Although decals can be more than just a graffiti, for example, they can be a series of details that you can add to your material. For instance, by simply placing these decals on a concrete material, you can create these cracks on the concrete. Decals have other uses as well. For example, you can add various leaks to your scene using decals. You can also have some vegetations with the help of decals. It can be said that decals are a very computationally cheap way to add details to your scene. As you can see, decals can even be a door or a thing. For this project, I have already selected some decals that I want to download with high quality. As you can see, it's a graffiti and two leaks. Now I will add them. Now, if I go to the content drawer and enter the Megascan folder, there is another folder called decals. Now, you see that the decal is actually a material instance and its textures. If I open the material, we see some settings that we also had in materials before. So, you can change its tiling value or change its color and the rest of the changes you can make. However, the most important parameter here is opacity because you can use it to make the decal disappear or reduce its intensity. The rest of the settings are exactly like any other normal material inside Unreal Engine. Let's see how we can add the decals to the scene. I will go to this corner of the scene to fully explain this to you. If you drag the decal into the scene, you'll see that it is easily applied to the scene. For better display, I switched to unlit mode. As you can see, along with the decal, a box has been added which is responsible for controlling the size and its other parameters. So with the help of this box, I can make it smaller. As shown, any part of the scene that this box comes into contact with will display the decal. This way I can adjust it. Also, if you don't want an object to receive a decal, select it and go to its settings. There, type decal and uncheck the receive decals option. Now that object won't receive decals anymore. By rotating it 90 degrees and moving it, I can put it on the wall. Let's add another decal to the scene. For example, you see this leak. I bring it into the scene and put it on the wall. As you can see, we added a leak to the wall. I can change its size to fit the wall. One thing to keep in mind is that you can change the order of the impact of decals on each other. For example, if I select this decal and change the sort order value from 0 to 1, it will be placed on top of the other decal. So you can have multiple decals on top of each other. As I mentioned, a decal works exactly like a material. When I'm in lit mode, I open its material and change its color to red. I can also play with roughness or any other parameter it contains inside, so you see that you should treat a decal like a material. As can be seen, the advantage of having decals is that you can add a lot of details to your scene at no cost. Now that I have one of the decals, I can apply more of them to different parts of my building. Here, the decals act as dirt gathered on top of each other. By increasing and decreasing the opacity, I can increase and decrease its intensity. Using decals to add details is an essential tool in Unreal Engine. Now that we understand how decals work, I want to apply them to my entire project by scaling and moving them. With the help of these decals, I can paint my buildings and add a lot of fidelity and realism to my project.
Also, I can change the color of the decals whenever I want. Here, I will move it a bit to get rid of these stretches. Also, I'll continue to place and scale them to help the realism of the project. Now, with the changes I make in the material, I'll improve it further. I have concluded that one decal is enough for this part, so I'll delete the others and resize this one. As you saw, adding the decals quickly added a nice depth to our scene. Make sure to test different decals and by changing their settings, especially the opacity, see which one works best for your work. I add a few more decals here to increase the depth and age of the scene. I'll bring in some new decals on this board to make it look less clean and to have more depth. These areas are also very clean so I get help from the decals. Now, by pressing the G button, I go to the game mode to see the scene better. Now it's time to add some randomization to some of the materials on scene. I'll duplicate the material I want and reduce its brightness, then apply it to some parts of the board so that some of its parts are darker. This way, we break the repetition. I do the same for the columns. That is, I copy the material, make it darker, and randomly select some columns and assign the new material to them. Seems like this decal also needs some changes. I will slightly change the lighting using the shortcut control plus L to have a better view. I go to the outliner and by selecting all the decals, I move them to a new folder and name the folder decals. It looks like the outliner needs more cleaning up, so I'll move these items to a folder called props and these ones to a folder called landscape. Well, I think we're almost done with this part. As you remember, we had some characters as helpers, and by going into game mode, I can move around in the scene and play. I will talk more about layers in the next lesson.